So welcome back to Tech Dudes Weekly. We are following up with our short form content. Hopefully uh, you got a chance to see that concerning WWDC. So we're gonna deep dive WWDC a little bit further, kind of pick on the things that at least we thought were important. Um, you know, again, throw in the comments and if you found something we missed or you want to join the conversation. Why don't we go ahead and jump right in. So, Dave, uh, lots of updates from WWDC. Um, you know, we thought they were going to just lead right in with artificial intelligence. They didn't do that. They started off with a whole bunch of updates to, uh, they started with Vision OS 2.0, which was very short. Could have been a 1.2. I think uh, MKBHD even said that. Yeah. Nothing, um, but fine, 2.0. I uh, had a few things in there that were not worth discussing on this channel. Nothing, um, no, and they moved through it pretty, pretty fast, too, which they is did. That was, yeah, if there was maybe five minutes of the whole thing. Um, you know, they jumped into, you know, they talked about what's coming in watchOS 11. Uh, a lot of the stuff tied mostly to Apple Health. Um, yep. The bigger news was probably more around iOS updates. And then all those iOS updates are feeding into iPadOS. A couple minor things around iPadOS that were updates to it. Nothing with Stage Manager, which, uh, you know, uh, I would have loved to have seen that. Nothing, but I've kind of given up on my uh, iPad being a, uh, a laptop replacement. Nothing myself anyway. Um, different video. Nothing. Uh, TVO, but, TVOS. Yeah. Um, couple things with TVOS, not much on just the home pods themselves. So yeah. in general, I think it was focused mostly around here's a whole ton of stuff for iOS. Nothing um, that's going to bleed to iPad OS. iPad OS finally got a calculator. The cool thing about the calculator though is that it actually uh, they applied some really cool uh, you know you can draw on the uh, the iPad Apple now. Apple intelligence. And, yeah Apple intelligence. Nothing uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. Nothing but uh, they did use some AI type stuff to make a calculator uh, you know really cool. If you want to see more about that um, we can either do a separate video or there's probably a few thousand of them on YouTube already uh, talking about it's called math notes and then take a peek for it. Um, but in general I don't think WWDC was the focus itself was anything around the hardware platforms or the operating systems that you know run those. Uh, it was mostly around. We thought they were going to say artificial intelligence. Nope, that's you know Apple did their standard marketing. We can't join the crowd. We're going to call it Apple intelligence. Um, probably brilliant, knowing as far as a marketing term, um, Apple intelligence is going to garner a little bit more um, playtime. I think. I, I think it's going to garner more playtime, I think it's going to garner a level of, well, it's Apple, so it's got to be safe. I, I really think that's what they did. And I think in, in a lot of ways, and we can dig into this a little bit later too, is I think you and I thought this was going to be a big old nothing burger, my personal opinion about what it was. Yay, yay, yay. No, I think they really pulled off a lot of stuff. They set back, which we all thought was them going, holy crap, what did they do? No, I, I, I have to give Apple prompts for this. If they go the way we think they're going to go. It's nothing but sheer brilliance and genius. And I'm not trying to sound like a fanboy, but there was an epiphany you and I had not too long ago about this. And we're like, holy crap. So I, I think it's, I think they played well with this, especially how they're doing some of the back end stuff. I think, yeah, that, that's the key there. I think the important thing here is that they're not driving everything to the cloud, right? I mean, you know, so, you know, the co pilots, the Gemini's, all that, I mean, they're cloud born and they should be. I mean, you know, Azure, Google, they make their money off the cloud, right? Um, Google, maybe not so as, as much, but anyway, um, neither here nor there. <laughs> and, uh, the way Apple's handled this, and it's going to affect, the hardware you have now. So this is a fracture we're going to see in some of the Apple ecosystem yeah. now. But if you have an iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, any M series tablet or Apple uh, laptop or desktop for that matter, as long as it's M series or mm -hmm. an A17 processor, more specifically in the mobile side, yeah. then, then you have enough NPU. And it's this is the key. It's NPU. There's a lot of people. Oh, it's about memory. No, it yeah, it has nope. to have a good amount of memory, but NPU is where it's at. And, then, and it's going to process a lot of requests for any of the artificial intelligence stuff. And we'll show a couple of these things on the screen in a second. Uh, but it's going to process them locally. It's going to use local LLMs developed by Apple on your device. 
That's key because it's key. Nothing's leaving your device. Everything's sitting there. Now, if it can't process a more complex type of request, it's going to the Apple private cloud. Now, the Apple private cloud is not moving data back and forth as far as context of your data. Your data is still secure. It's using it to be able to process the request and gather more outside data to be able to feed back to the local LLM. Now, beyond that, if it can't use that to solve it, then it will go to chat GPT. But here's the key. It will not go to chat GPT without warning you and asking you, would you, I can't process this. Now, it's not going to say it like that because it's Apple. Nothing. But it's going to say, hey, chat GPT may be more well suited to answer this request. Would you like me to use it? And yeah. then you have the option of saying yes or no. Because when it goes to chat GPT, all bets are off. Who knows what data is going where? But at least it's warned you. And if you decide you want to avoid chat GPT altogether, you have every right to do it. So I think is you know artificial intelligence, Apple intelligence, whatever you want to call it, more secure than what has been out there in the past? I'm going to tentatively say yes with the hope that they're being true to their word. If that's the case, this could be a next evolution of the way AI needs to work is the edge device handling the majority of the requests and only relying on the cloud when the, then when it can't be processed at that level. Yeah, I think though, to pull that off, my personal opinion, what is gonna be the wait time increments between those tiers? I like the tiered implementation, but if I gotta wait you know, 20 seconds and heaven forbid, that's a first world problem. If I gotta wait 20 seconds for a response being between the tiers, that's going to be a problem, in my personal opinion. I mean, nobody wants to wait more than half a millisecond for anything now, but I, I think I want to see how it's pulled off. We're still in the early stages of it. I agree with you. I think it's a, a potentially more secure platform, but what I don't want it to be is the laser pin where you go, beep, tell me what you want, you know, half a day later, oh, I got your response. Yeah. That's how I want to see that implement. How I want to see how that's implemented. And I think Apple has taken a little bit of that into. I'm going to give them credit into where you know I don't know if it's due or not, but um, I think they've taken some of that into account only because the rollout is going to be slow rolled in the fall. Yeah. Thing. Um, they're English. It's going to be English only. So sorry, everybody else who doesn't speak English. You know, stupid American. Sorry. Nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll own it, whatever. Nothing. Um, but it's also going to probably be U.S. bound first, and then they'll slowly expand to other English speaking, and then they'll continue to expand from there. Yeah. But I think it gives them the opportunity to see, you know, where the bugs are. Nothing. And you know, with a, it's almost like a canary test. Nothing. We're yeah. going to, we're going to, you know, send the canaries down the mine and, you know, sniff for gas. And if they come back, great. We can send more people down the mine, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, again, the first canary test is going to be the slow roll of English speaking U.S. You know, bound. You know, group. I figure the first twelve months it's going to be a big beta. I mean, yeah. I, I really, even though they're going to say it's production, I think it's going to be the first twelve months is working the bugs out of it. So, and and my understanding is the Apple private cloud is actually going to be running as dedicated services within the Google data centers. So it does give them an opportunity to scale those up over time. Um, I do think they were also brilliant in how they, they formatted some of these legal contracts because oh, they're yeah. not actually paying for a lot of this stuff. They're giving giving away some of their services in, in, in retrospect, you know, for, you know, placing Google things up front, uh, allowing open AI to, you know, monetize a little bit easier on the Apple platform. So I mean, again, that's, you know, neither here nor there when talking about tech, nothing, but they're being very smart about this. And I'm almost think treating this as could this be generation 1.5 of where AI is headed. Nothing. Um, let me bring yeah. up a screen here real quick, just cause you know, it's always nice to show some pretty stuff on the screen as to what we're talking about. Um, so, I mean, again, they're going to center on the iPhone first, and, and they should. <laughs> well, they even say it right there on their on their page, coming this uh, coming in beta this fall. I mean, we all know it's not going to be perfect. Did I want to see a smarter version of Siri? Yes, but I think Apple's playing this fairly safe, and they're gonna they're gonna I won't say slow roll it, but there this is not going to go at speed because I think if they do, it's going to be a massive no go. Yeah, and I think the way they're integrating this too. I mean, you know, Apple is a lot about eye candy. I mean, let's you know get it straight. And, yep. and you know how they even showed you know Siri kind of taking over the entire screen here with a request. You know, making Siri you know somewhat intelligent. We'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think it's smart the way they did a lot of this. You know, design is that 
very pretty type of, you know, bubbles for image generation and show, and be able to, you know, break down, you know, how you want the image to be continued to be built. And then as you're going through the stages of a prompt, uh, you know, engineer, and then, um, integration to all the other platforms, you know, within the I, within iOS itself, it's just going to be very pretty. And it's also built for the end user that doesn't know anything about AI. They don't have to. They just no, have, and I think they that's going to be critical. I think that's going to be critical for usage pickup. I mean, think about when ChatGPT came out. I mean, you would sit there and fight with it for God knows how long at prompts. No, I said I wanted to see a bird, not a turd. There's a big difference. I mean, look. I mean, even this, like you know, being built, you know, with it, it has all these standard stuff you'd expect for. You know, help me rewrite an email. Help yeah. me change the tone of it. You know, make it friendlier than you know my personality is allowing me to do. And then, you know, those types of things, they're all built in, uh, you, know, you know, describing changes, proofreading, and then, you know, generating images, you know, like this, there's a sketch, I'm going to take that sketch and go ahead and redraw it, you know, within Freeform. I know, uh, you know, Microsoft talked about something fairly similar in uh, their paint tool, yeah. um, but this is ubiquitous across their entire platform. And I mean, you know, so it's done very well pretty and i think it's going to be more accessible to end users that are not complete geeks because the yeah. last thing i want to do is explain this to my parents i'll tell you that i think they took the right way in integrating this solely at the os layer versus at an application layer i mean for example and if i'm completely wrong on this i'm sure we'll get nailed in the comments for it but chat gpt or copilot was integrated at the browser layer, which is integrated at the OS layer, but it's still a different application layer versus pure OS, where this will Apple put everything into itself and made it uh, almost like a ubiquitous uh, or a homogeneous environment across the board. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think they've, it's going to be seamless. And then like with any, anything Apple, if you buy into the ecosystem, which, you know, you know, it's almost like a drug, right? You know, you buy one Apple product, you end up buying more. And then, yep. um, <laughs> it's the fruit juice. Yeah, it must be definitely drinking the Kool Aid. Knowing, you know, now the Kool Aid's just called, you know, Apple Intelligence. Knowing, um, that's that's very Appleist. They couldn't use a normal word. We've got to give it our own, which again is is hellacious marketing. Oh, they should have had Tim Cook dress up as the high C guy and bust through a wall or something. Nothing, but <laughs> um, no, that know. would have been that would have been Apple intelligence generating hallucinations, very high quality hallucinations. Yes, according to Tim Cook. Yes, exactly. Yes, at least they'll be good hallucinations, which yes. is the best kind. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think they're they're definitely heading the right direction. But again, it goes across the ecosystem. Uh, you know, if you have a Mac, you have an iPad, you know, the watch, things like that. These things are going to start to blend together. The thing, again, you got to be very careful as to here's the fracture that I was ta alluding to earlier is that not everybody is going to get this. So if you're sitting on some of the older hardware, then, you know, we even I hate to say older hardware because iPhone 15 is not getting this. That was no. a bi Bionic A16 processor. It doesn't have an MPU that's capable of running this. Nothing. So as much as I know Apple as a company likes to have some longevity to their products and continue to bring things forward, I mean, they're even saying that the uh, Intel-based Macs still have some breath in them. And, you know, so kudos. I mean, fantastic. There has to be a, long, uh, you know, a line drawn here because what they're trying to do is pushing technology to its next evolutionary state and, and it needs the hardware to back it. So again, I think you alluded to, I think in our short form content, Dave is, you know, is software going to push, you know, start taking advantage of all this fantastic hardware. I mean, hell, we got an M iPad now with an M4. Yeah. iPad OS isn't taking advantage of it, but the Apple intelligence stuff will. Nothing. Um, yeah, and, and I've said it multiple times. I mean, hell, look at even what's on the screen right now. Great powers come with great privacy. That's a straight pull off from Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, the marketing on this is freaking hilarious and just genius in the same sentence. Uncle Ben would be proud. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think, I think this is how they're going to win this battle, because in all reality, they are behind the eight ball in a lot of this. But with to, you, to the point you alluded to regards to OpenAI um, with uh, being on the back end with Google, I think they just gave themselves 18 months worth of let's get this perfect before we, we completely do it on our own. That's my personal opinion. I, I think that's how it's going to go. I, I, I agree completely. Nothing. I mean, you know, they're introducing more edge device type stuff. They're beating 
Microsoft, I think, to the punch with that, because, I mean, will stuff work with Qualcomm and stuff? Yeah, but, you know, the integration with Windows is, like you said, it's wrapped into, if they push Bing on me one more time, I'm going to scream. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then you got to want to say, did you Bing? Yeah, and I still feel like the AI is only being used to push ads at me. Nothing, but this is kind of cool, too, is that the one thing they brought up every single time is that there's an SDK, there's an API, there's a blah, blah. Yeah. That the third-party apps alone and the ecosystem's response to this could be huge. Nothing. So I think we're going to see more and more things open up and get integrated. And some of our favorite, more prosumer type apps, Final Cut Pro, um, you know, some of the things like that. This is just you know, I, you know, icing on the cake for those types of you know platforms. Nothing. And you know, they even alluded to. Uh, well, I think we did a short on this too. Is uh, Apple loves Black Magic Studios, nothing because they're building a camera specific for spatial, you know, uh, you know, video. Nothing. The cameras unbelievable it's probably a bajillion dollars nothing but you know yeah. does that position them to consider you know does that mean da vinci you know apple has the money to go buy black magic studios and probably not skip a beat nothing and paying cash nothing you know does da vinci start to get pulled into final cut or become the big brother of final cut and then all of a sudden apple intelligence is overlaid on the whole thing well uh, you know apple had to throw a metric ton of money at it because based on what i saw in that camera the, the images they talked about it, it's it's like an alien. I mean, that, the resolution is freaking nuts. Dude, that camera was so cool that I could see George Lucas and James Cameron salivating. Nothing. I mean, that that's how cool that camera was. And you know, uh, I apologize if that's probably not the case. Nothing, but you know, that's the image. <laughs> We're that sorry, I had. George. We're sorry, James. Yeah, yeah, that's the image that went in my head. Nothing. Yeah. So uh, Titanic fourteen. Yeah, I am my own AI generator. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I should make that T-shirt. Oh <laughs> God! Next week on Tech Dudes Weekly Merch. <laughs> Are you drinking the fruit juice? Yeah, yeah. Do you have the Apple intelligence? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw. I mean, SDKs across the board. You know, th th there's a lot to come. Um, you know, again, we're going to see a lot more in the fall. Um, it's probably going to butt right up to iPhone 16 coming out. Probably yeah. some updates with M4s for the Macintosh line, and then so the iPad's not the only one taking advantage of the M4. Um, but I, I'm excited for this one. I, I think this is going to be one of the core wow factors that um, that we haven't seen from Apple in a couple of years. Yeah, I, I think in everything we saw leading up to this, I thought you know one thing different. This has opened my eyes. Has it changed my overall opinion? to a degree, um, but it's a big wait and see now. Um, I think there's still a lot of, I'll say market share battles that are gonna happen out there. Um, but I think maybe Apple for what I'm gonna consider some of their la latest products, why did you waste your money on this? Or why did you abandon this? This could have given them, and like I said, another 18 months worth of, we're gonna get this right. Which is, in my opinion, the Steve Jobs way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't need to be first to market. They need to be the one that brought it to market correctly. Yep, uh, I agree. Um, this is this is going to be very interesting. Uh, I'm excited to get my hands on you know the the fall betas. And then, um, just for you know, I, I'm not installing the iOS 18 beta or anything like that. Maybe the public preview. Now I usually wait for that um, just because I don't need something to eradicate my battery life or anything like that. You know, um, I get that's never happened. No, no, God, no, no. Yeah, betas are normally solid, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, this is. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm uh, I, I'm very interested. I'm I'm excited for this, and I haven't been excited in quite a while for a lot of the ecosystem. Um, but this one will probably make me stick with um, my investments in Apple right now. When I was considering looking at, you know, these new Qualcomm Copilot PCs, things like that, um, this one put put a kibosh on it for me and told yeah. me, you know, stick with Apple for a few minutes. I still have some Apple products. I'm not going to abandon the platform completely. Am I going to have more of a multi-use ecosystem? Probably, unless something drastically changes, and that's to be determined. I think it's still too early to tell, but I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think? Yeah. So again, uh, thank you very much for you know joining the channel. And um, you know, we hope that if you had any questions, you know, comments, you know, please throw them in there. We love having you know some commentary so we can go back and forth and change up maybe our thought pattern. And or you know, you know, tell us we're wrong. Tell us we're right. That's fine. You know, I'm telling somebody telling me my, I'm right is you know not a common thing. So I always welcome it. I take less medication uh, when that happens. <laughs> yeah, or a, a less Kool Aid, right? <laughs> and, um, 
<laughs> I but don't yeah. like the apple juice. You know, subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell. Nothing. Uh, but more importantly, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. And uh, we'll be back with uh, more content very shortly. Thanks again. Take care, everybody.